I spent a year trying to hide from the grief and heartbreak I felt when Judy left. I thought I was over all this, and it was all behind me. But life has this way of making you face your grief. Last night, I saw her again, and I felt all the pain I've been avoiding for the past year hitting me all at once. It was suffocating. I tried my best not to let it get to me. But then she came to me and told me about her diary. The diary she left for me to know why she left. The diary that broke my mind and heart into pieces as I read through it in utter disbelief. I fell in a deep sleep as if I had just finished running a marathon. I was so tired and fatigued that I didn't feel myself being abducted and brought to this dark room I was now in. A light bulb flickered from above and I could see I wasn't alone in the room. There was someone else tied to a chair, just like me. It took my eyes a minute to adjust to the light, and I could now see who it was. It was... Adam. He was violently shaking, trying to free himself. I don't think he realized I was in the room as well, because when I called out to him, he jumped in his seat. Adam? Is that you? What? Well, who? Who's there? He replied, panic sounding in his every syllable. It's Matthew. Do you have any idea where are we? Do you remember how you got here? I asked, trying to help him gather his thoughts and focus. No, I have no idea. I was returning home when I heard a faint whisper behind me. I turned around to look and then I blacked out. Next thing I know, I woke up here. He was starting to relax a little bit. Do you know where's Judy? Is she okay? I couldn't stop myself from asking. The hunters got to me and the man she was living with. It was only a matter of time before they catch her too. I don't know. We had a fight last night after the party and she said she wanted to be alone. But she wasn't home when morning came. I had to go to work. And I was hoping she'd be back when I returned. He sounded ashamed or upset. I was starting to worry even more now. What if they got to her before us and brought us here to torture us in front of her? I was trying to calm Adam, but now I was the one panicking. We need to get out of here quickly, I said, trying to free myself. No shit, I've been trying to, but these restraints are too tight. Then, a door somewhere I couldn't see opened. Someone walked in and I could see his figure slowly approaching. He walked towards Adam and slapped him. He then proceeded to ask, Hey, big guy. Do you happen to know where your girlfriend is? He sounded cold and a little sarcastic. He didn't give Adam a chance to reply before he continued. Well, maybe you're still asleep. I'll give you something to wake you. He grabbed Adam's head violently, pulling his hair and opening his eye. He then pulled out something from his pocket. It looked like eye drops, and then he started pouring it into Adam's eye. Adam screamed in a way I never thought a tough-looking guy as him would. I squinted to see better, and that's when I realized why Adam was screaming the way he did. He wasn't putting eye drops into his eyes. It was acid. Alright, I'll give you a minute to remember now. The man said, and then he turned to me. Now, who do we have here? The smart detective. I bet you're smart enough to tell me where she is without forcing me to hurt you. Am I right? He came closer, and I could see his face as he smirked at me. If you believe that I'm that smart, and I'm smart enough to know that I'm not coming out of here alive anyway. I don't know where she is, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I tried to sound as much confident as I could, but I was really scared. In all my years of detective work, I have seen many disturbing cases, but I never got to be in the victim's chair. I was now, and I was terrified. He scoffed. <laughs> Fine. I'll get back to you in a moment. He said and turned towards Adam again. Every time he spoke, he made me feel more and more uneasy. Not because he was intimidating or behaving insane, 
but because he sounded very normal. He got to Adam and held his head to face him. Come on, Adam. I know you have information that can help me. Spit it out, son. Careful what you wish for. Adam spat into his face and tried to headbutt him, but the man got away before Adam could reach him. Oh. Now I'm disappointed. Fuck you! Adam replied immediately. The man pulled a knife from his pocket and held Adam's face once more. He put the knife against Adam's cheek and spoke. This time he sounded angry. This is the last time I'll ask you, you worthless piece of shit! Where is the vampire? I was shocked. Adam doesn't know what she was, right? The man started to carve the knife into Adam's cheek, and he screamed again. Aww, you gonna cry, big guy? Let me sanitize that wound. He poured more of the acid, but this time on the wound. Adam shrieked loudly. I never thought I'd hear a person shriek this way. I felt bad for Adam. He was being tortured for something he knew nothing about. And now, he was learning a disturbing truth about Judy. A truth I still couldn't process properly. I am ashamed to admit that a sick part of me, the part that admires the intelligence of serial killers and psychopaths, was enjoying Adam's torture. I hated him for stealing Judy from me. Even when I now know that she left to protect me, I was still angry that this guy always flaunted how he had her. The man finally pulled away from Adam, and Adam kept screaming and cursing at him. He approached me once more. This time, I was truly terrified. Matthew, you are a good man. Please cooperate with me. It's for everyone's good. I was confused. What are you talking about? I won't let you kill her. I can't. You can't keep making them live in fear and disguise like this. I replied, voice trembling. The man gave me a very confused look that slowly turned to amazement. He finally spoke. Oh, so you know things after all. Is it the diary? He asked enthusiastically as if he was a child. I nodded, my face a mix of confusion and terror. He laughed. <laughs> my, my, you think I'm a hunter, do you? No, my dear, no, no. I want to save her from the hunters. She is my daughter, after all. I was shocked. My God. This was Jeremiah. The man who forced her to go into exile and left her to the hunters. Her father. He could see how my face shifted, and he spoke. I don't want to hurt you. You've been good to my daughter and kept her safe for years. Please, help me find her. I could see a saddened expression on his face as his voice became more and more upset. How do you know? I asked after a long pause. He explained. I never truly left her. I always kept tabs on her. I knew everything going on in her life. That wasn't until yesterday. She disappeared completely, and you two are the last known people to have been in contact with her. Suddenly, Adam started laughing maniacally. Well, well, well. If it ain't the great Jeremiah, Lord of the Vampires. I was hoping I could bring the bitch's head to my leaders to be accepted back into the guild. But now, I have you instead. He instantly stood up, finally breaking his restraints as he launched at Jeremiah, pinning him to the wall. He was choking Jeremiah with both hands as he lifted him off the ground. Jeremiah kept waving his arms at him. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A vampire can't defend himself against this hulking mass of a hunter. I knew I had to do something. I also knew that Adam wasn't going to let me live since I know about the hunters now. I didn't try to free my restraints, rather launched at him while still tied to the chair. We both fell to the ground and the chair broke. I was now free, but still too weak to get up. Jeremiah grabbed the knife and slashed at Adam's neck, but he dodged at the last moment. He punched Jeremiah and sent him flying. As much as Adam was strong, I felt that Jeremiah wasn't trying to fight. 
I remember how Judy talked about that oath, that he should never kill hunters or humans unless necessary. I decided to help. I wrapped the now free restraints around his neck from behind, strangling him. He was too strong even for his size. He kept flailing and turning around violently and I was barely holding on to the leather rope around his neck trying to squeeze harder. Then, from out of nowhere, Jeremiah came in front of him and sank the knife in his good eye. Adam screamed and punched Jeremiah but this time Jeremiah caught his hand. I could hear bones cracking as Jeremiah squeezed Adam's hand in his palm before twisting it and ripping it off his arm. He was now not moving as strong as he was and I took this chance to strangle him until he laid motionless on the ground. I laid beside him, panting and trying to catch my breath. Jeremiah lent me his hand and pulled me up. Now you know why I must find her, and you will help me. He said with determination as we shook hands. Believe me, there's nothing more I'd love to do other than saving her. But I really have no idea where she is. Aren't you a good detective? Find her then. He said as if mocking me. Aren't you her father? You literally raised her and lived with her for centuries. I retorted, feeling so proud of myself for that comeback. I instantly regretted it as he lifted me up and slammed me to the wall. Don't play smartass with me, kid. Understand? I could see how serious he was now. I guess Judy failed to describe his temper exactly. He put me down and we walked outside. I broke the silence by asking him. So, how do you think I can find her? This time, I was being serious. Her blood runs within yours. I can follow that trail. Wh what? I don't understand. What are you talking about? I was confused. Us vampires can follow the blood trail of one another through a live host. I guess she failed to mention that in her diary. Or, more accurately, she knew nothing about that power. The reason we kill our victims after taking their blood is that this way we cannot be tracked. Not even by our own kind. My confusion was increasing, but she never took my blood. I didn't even know she was a vampire until last night. Then I remembered. The first time we made love. She did bite me several times, but I just thought it was a kink or something back then. I looked at my left shoulder. There was a specific bite mark she left on me that night that still was present on me till this day. So, how exactly do we follow a blood trail? I finally asked. There's no we in that. I will find her myself. Your part is only to help me follow the blood trail. No way. If you're going to do this, then I'm coming with you. This is important to me. Besides, she really hates you now. Let me talk to her. He rolled his eyes, then sighed. Fine. You already know too much, and the hunters will be after you anyways. We went back to my house. I prepared some dinner for us both. I don't know why I was friendly with him. The guy literally kidnapped me in my sleep and was ready to torture me. And besides that, he was the reason my duty was on the run. But somehow, I could feel a great grief and guilt within him. So I decided to ask. What's the deal with you two afraid to fight? What do you mean? Adam, you were pretty much back in the entire fight. It's like you didn't want to kill him even though you could have finished him off in seconds. What's that all about? Judy, I mean Alice, mentioned in her diary you were too afraid to fight the hunters. Why? He stared into nothingness and took a deep breath. He then spoke. What I do, I do for reasons you would never understand. He just said that, not even caring how hollow he sounded. I got angry. Listen you, I don't care if you're an elder, a vampire or whatever the fuck you are. I care about Judy and I will save her. So if you want to help, you better be clear with me, okay? He turned to me, anger filling his eyes, then instantly turned to grief again. Did she ever tell you about me? I shook my head. 
All she ever told me was that you and her mother died when she was young. He chuckled sadly. <laughs> I never wanted any of that to happen. I was too curious to know what he meant, but I decided to not press the matter any further. For now, at least. So, how do we follow the blood trail? I asked. <clears throat> Show me the bite mark. He said, standing up and approaching me. I opened my shirt and showed him my shoulder. Okay. This is going to hurt a little bit. He said, before biting me in the same spot. He kept digging his teeth into my shoulder for a minute before he pulled away. I know where she is now. <laughs>